Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are checking out the 2016 Subaru Forester and this is the last of the Subaru models for which I have not reviewed uh, so I will have links in the video description to all of the other models. Um, not every trim level but I do have at least one main review of every model out there. Now there are quite a few different options as to how to configure the Subaru Forester. So you can get the 2.5 liter with a six speed manual transmission. You can get the 2.5 liter boxer engine with the CVT transmission, which is what we are in, or you can opt for a two liter turbocharged boxer engine uh, if you want more power uh, and some of the higher end Forester trim levels. Now under the hood of this vehicle is a 2.5 liter boxer engine, dual overhead cams, and it's producing 170 horsepower and 174 pound feet of torque. And that may not sound like much power, and really it isn't, you know, the acceleration in this is a little underwhelming, but the vehicle really doesn't weigh that much, and so it has that to its advantage. 3,400 pounds in the trim level we're looking at, and if you were to go with the manual transmission, you could get that as low as 3,300 pounds, which is very good for a small SUV like this. Uh, as a comparison, uh, that's lighter than the Corvette, which I tested, lighter than the Honda Accord, which I tested, and it's also lighter than a Subaru STI, and yet this has almost the same amount of cargo space behind the rear seats as all three of those vehicles combined. Now, one of the other benefits of that low weight is the fuel economy. And so comparing this vehicle with other vehicles in its class, it has a better highway fuel economy rating. So 24 in the city, 32 on the highway. And that highway rating is better than the all wheel drive versions of the Honda CRV, the Mazda CX-5, the Toyota RAV4 and the Ford Escape. So better fuel economy than all of those on the highway if you tick the all wheel drive box. Now, speaking of the all-wheel drive system in the Subaru, this is, of course, standard. There is only all-wheel drive models, uh, and you are always sending power to all four wheels. The way it works is there is a continuously variable electronic transfer clutch uh, for which you can determine, you know, different levels of locking force uh, so you can choose to send more torque to the axle that has more grip. Getting into a little mud and snow here. See how it does. And so I believe it does have open differentials in the front and the rear. Uh, however, you do have that locking center clutch so you can send more torque to the axle which has more grip. Now they also have something called X mode, which this vehicle does not have, uh, but in the higher trim levels of the Forester you can get X mode. And so what that does, uh, it changes the throttle response so it's a little bit lighter. And that's one of the things that I don't quite like about this vehicle is the throttle is really punchy uh, as you get onto it. You know, it's pretty aggressive. Uh, the curve to start uh, but you can change that with the X mode so if you're going slow in an off-road scenario plenty of clearance there this does have 8.7 inches of ground clearance uh, so not an issue driving over this fairly deep snow which is in the center now another thing that X mode does is it limits the amount of wheel spin. So it, it uses the brakes. Uh, if one of the wheels starts to spin, it will more aggressively use that brake uh, than if you don't have X mode. It also can change the amount of lockup of that center clutch so you can send more torque to the axle with more uh, grip. And so ultimately, you know, this isn't the best case uh, for me to be testing this because it doesn't have the X mode and the X mode would enhance the off-road capability. And another thing the X mode adds is that it also gives you hill descent control. Now, as far as the practicality of this car, there's really almost no way to fault it. It has phenomenal visibility out the front to the sides. You've got huge windows, a big window out the back. So you've got great visibility all the way around. You've got a large sunroof here, which actually retracts almost all the way back. So you've got a really large opening on the top if you would like. As far as the interior, you've got plenty of adjustment in the seat and the steering wheel. It does telescope and move up and down so you've got a lot of adjustment you don't have to worry about your knees hitting anything and I'm 6'1 I can sit in the rear seats no problem plenty of leg room back there so you can fit four or five adults in this vehicle no issues plenty of room in the back almost 75 uh, cubic feet of cargo space behind me if you fold down those rear seats uh, which is some of the best in this class uh, not many vehicles with 75 cubic feet uh, you know it's just shy of that uh, but a seriously large 
amount of cargo space back there. So as far as practicality, good fuel economy, great visibility, very functional interior. You can fit four or five adults and you've got plenty of space behind the rear seats uh, for cargo space. So an extremely practical vehicle. You've got all wheel drive and yet still capable of 32 miles per gallon on the highway. So this does have adaptive cruise control. Uh, and one of the things I've noticed is it's basically turned off the eyesight system because where we're driving, it doesn't see a road. You know, there's not a, a clear paved road here with lines and things like that. So it turns off your lane departure warning and it also turns off the collision uh, system so that you don't run into the car ahead of you. It tries to mitigate any collision that may occur. You know, a decently comfortable ride in here. Aside from the punchy acceleration, the steering feels okay. It's pretty light and, you know, on roads, uh, it doesn't necessarily feel that phenomenal. Off-road, it feels a little bit better because you kind of like having a lighter feel to get it to turn, uh, especially when there's kind of forces reacting against those wheels. Uh, but overall, you know, the steering's fine, um, just not that much feedback from it on the road and a fairly light feel to it. Okay, so we've made it to our off-road playground and the first thing we're going to do is just see if we can go over a hill. A little bit of loss of traction there. Up onto the hill. Might be a couple spots where a wheel pops up, but no problems going over a hill. Amazing. If we cut across this little sideways. It is saying that there's no traction, but it didn't have any problem continuing. There's a little bit of wheel spin there in the back. Okay, so we're gonna drive up this hill, see how the all-wheel drive system does with the open differentials front and back. And I'm gonna go as slow as possible just to make it as difficult as possible. The Volvo had a little trouble getting up this, but we've got a little bit better conditions. The Mitsubishi did not, but it had a limited slip front differential. So we are just crawling. No wheel slip so far. A little bit of wheel slip there. Traction control managed the wheel slip and we came right over. So it is able to just inch over. Pretty impressive. Um, it is on all season tires, but the ground conditions are pretty good today. It's not really wet, it's dry, and it's about 50 degrees outside. Uh, but considering that it has two open differentials, that wasn't too bad, uh, able to manage it with the brakes. And so now we will try going up in reverse, seeing if that makes any difference. I don't trust rear view cameras. Okay, so just gonna start inching. And there we're getting some wheel slip, give it a little more gas. And it doesn't wanna go up. So we'll try that again, going a little bit faster. traction control giving up there all right so we'll give it a little bit more speed and see how it does capable of holding uh, but it doesn't want to give it power I think that CVT is kind of cutting out so that it won't mess up so a little bit faster and there we go we're over the hill so there we had to give it a little bit of speed. It was capable of crawling over going forwards. Uh, I was using the low gearing there in reverse. Uh, I wanted a little bit more speed in order to get over. All right, so now I'm gonna go at this from an angle and see how it does going up. Put it back into that low gearing and then we're just gonna kind of inch up. Seems to do a good job managing it when you go, are going forward, uh, not quite as easy to overcome when you're in reverse. So it was able to put some pressure on that brake that was spinning and then allow the other side to put down some power. You can hear that brake working.
traction control flashing but still able to get over it so honestly like pretty impressive uh, whatever scenario I throw it through except for reverse that wasn't too happy but I feel like you're probably more often going to be going uh, forwards up an incline that steep than you are going to be going backwards so pretty impressive that it's capable of climbing it uh, uses the brakes to intervene and this again is without X mode uh, which would help it out a bit so looking at the big picture, great fuel economy, fantastic visibility all the way around. Uh, you've got great practicality. You can fit rear passengers, plenty of legroom back there, good amount of cargo space, and all the while a solid all-wheel drive system. Uh, so, you know, a great overall package. A few uh, nitpicking things, you know, it's a little underpowered and the throttle is a little punchy, but I don't think, you know, complaining about the throttle is that big of a deal in the big scheme of things. Overall, a very nice, practical, affordable vehicle, uh, which can serve a lot of purposes so thank you guys for watching and if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave those below whoa <laughs> so looking at the big picture so looking at the big so looking at the big picture <clears throat> I'm just gonna say so looking at the big picture a lot